As pilgrims who fled religious persecution took on the monumental task of building a new world for their children and grandchildren, one of their top priorities was to educate the next generation and prepare them to play their part in the unfolding drama that came to be known as the United States of America. Schools like Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Brown, and Dartmouth were all founded with an explicitly Christian mission. Like their English forerunners at Cambridge and Oxford, these schools set out to train pastors, clergymen, and others in public life with a thoroughly biblical worldview. That American tradition has continued. Today, there are nearly 1,000 religiously affiliated colleges and universities from sea to shining sea. They range from nationally recognized powerhouses like Baylor, Notre Dame, and Brigham Young to small liberal arts colleges and upstart seminaries. Wherever these schools are found, they're marked by the countless outreach programs and service hours they offer to local communities. Whether serving veterans, feeding the homeless, or volunteering to help underprivileged youth, the faith of these religious colleges and their students inspires them to serve those in need. Yet, if the current movement to purge society of Judeo-Christian values has its way, hundreds of thousands of students and their families will be cut off from the chance to attend a private religious university. And this great American tradition will become a relic of the past. Why? Because in early 2021, an activist group known as REAP the so-called Religious Exemption Accountability Project, filed a lawsuit against the Department of Education. The lawsuit demands that the government block students from using their scholarships, grants, and other federal funds at religious universities that hold fast to perennial Christian doctrines on marriage and sexual morality. It's not hard to figure out REAP's intentions. After all, the self-proclaimed mission of REAP's parent organization is to, quote, sabotage Christian supremacy. It's equally clear that REAP understands Christian supremacy to be the beliefs held in common by all Abrahamic faiths for millennia, beliefs that marriage is a lifelong union of one man and one woman, that sex should be reserved for marriage, and that differences between the sexes are created by God, permanent and meaningful. REAP's lawsuit is part of a broader effort that targets all private religious universities and their students for punishment. Like their Christian counterparts, Orthodox Jewish universities like Yeshiva University in New York City are being hauled into court over the very same beliefs. REAP's lawsuit not only seeks to prevent students from receiving federal financial aid if they attend a school that aligns with their religious beliefs, it also claims that legal protections for religion are unconstitutional in general. That flies in the face of the First Amendment's Free Exercise Clause and would force people of every faith to fall in line with government-mandated orthodoxy on key matters of faith and practice or suffer severe penalties. Make no mistake, REAP wants to radically transform our country. They aim to turn a nation founded as a refuge for those seeking to practice their faith freely into a nation that is openly hostile to people of faith. Unfortunately, the so-called Equality Act, which passed in the House of Representatives, carries similar threats and much more. It is sweeping legislation that would harm not only religious institutions, but also women and girls in athletics, dorms, and private changing areas. The government can't discriminate against Americans based on religion. That's guaranteed by the First Amendment, and it's what the U.S. Supreme Court highlighted in its recent decision unanimously upholding religious exercise in Fulton versus the city of Philadelphia. Chief Justice John Roberts wrote, Government fails to act neutrally when it proceeds in a manner intolerant of religious beliefs or restricts practices because of their religious nature. REAP's lawsuit invites the court to do just that, to actively participate in bigotry against religious schools and their students. Thankfully, religious colleges and universities aren't backing down. With the help of Alliance Defending Freedom, three schools, Corbin University, William Jessup University, and Phoenix Seminary, are asking the court to allow them to defend their God-given liberty as parties in the case. America is big enough for religious schools and public schools to coexist. Generations of America's finest students have attended religious colleges and universities. These institutions have been part of our nation's fabric since its founding. All these schools ask is for the right to operate consistently with their beliefs, 
the very beliefs that inspire everything they do. That shouldn't be too much to ask. Find out more about this case at www.adflegal.org. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook.